Hey guys, okay, I want to show this to you because I've shown this before a few months ago, but I want to go over it again here. And this is why it's critical because it's coming up more and more now. People are still waiting for rates to come down even more. Rates have come down a little bit uh, and then bounce back a little bit, come back. I mean, so they're kind of just sitting like this a little bit. Um, but I want to show you the overall pitch. If you buy now, okay, it's not like, hey, buy now so we can do a loan for you. No, no, this is just numbers, okay? Just look at the numbers here as I walk you through this because this is critical when you're making a decision to look at numbers, where we're going, inventory numbers, play into it, take out the emotion, okay? There's still a lot of scatter, um, I wouldn't say scatter brain, but a lot of chatter, I should say, out there about, hey, rates are gonna be, uh, not rates, but you know, the, the real estate market's gonna plummet, it's gonna take a hit, all this stuff, okay? But let's look at the numbers before you come to some sort of conclusion. I'm gonna show you two slides here real quick, okay? So if you look here, betting, betting against the champ here, 73, 7, and 1. This is how many times real estate since 1941 has appreciated, 73 times, compared to 7 times, okay, and then 1 at flat 0, okay? So let's take a look at this here first, and I'll bounce back over here. So you can see all the appreciation here. Starting, this is from 1941, okay? There's a 0 right there, a 0 there. So you take this all the way down here. Okay, look at all the appreciation here all through these years. Okay, minus one here, 90s, zero. I actually remember that because I was in college at that time and my parents were trying to sell their house. Okay, and then it came through here and then it started going through through the roof here. Good solid appreciation, by the way. Healthy appreciation, about 3%, 3.5%, 4%, somewhere around there. Uh, as you can see here, this was leading up to the crash here because everybody got qualified for a mortgage. I've been doing this 21 years. So I've when I first got into the industry back in 2002, basically people would, um, you know, you could fog a mirror. You know, if you had good credit scores, I mean, they had a, a program called Fast and Easy. They had a program called CISA, Stated Income, Stated Assets. They had a program, No Income, No Assets. Uh, of course, we're going to have a crash, okay? Because if you don't have to verify income or assets and, and you just need a 620 credit score, back then you could buy not just one, but two investment properties, which is crazy. Okay, so so just think about that as that led up to it more and more. There was so much, um, you know, demand and supply out there. Keep on, people kept on buying and buying. But on the next slide, I'm going to show you what happened. So if you look here, now, now we, you know, the, the uh, crash started hitting here. We started feeling in 06, okay? And then we really took a main hit here. Now, me personally, I took a major hit as far as obviously income, but as far as I had a lot of rental properties and so forth. I was an idiot. I had too many of them. I thought, hey, you know, this is great. Keep on doing it. Did not know anything about metrics. Thought I was an, you know, an, an expert at it. Made all the mistakes. Took a beating. I mean, I, I could tell the story. I have so many different parts of it and stuff. And he, you know, it was ugly, personally and business wise. So, uh, you know, as you look here, took a big, big hit here, and then we started coming out of it. Okay, more and more and more. Now, this is why people. You see this number right here. This is why people think, oh my God, you had all this appreciation. Now it's going to go back down here. Before you even think about that, let me show you a couple other things here, okay? Before I show you what the difference is. So prices up here in 2020, 2021 doesn't mean the crash is head, okay? So I know we're in 2024 here, but just follow me. Okay, so 1943, 1947, prices compounded 118%. Okay, then prices went higher for 40, 43 straight years. 43 straight years. 74 to 79, pr prices compounded 93%. Then they went higher for 10 years before only going down 1% in 1990. Then another 14 consecutive positive years. Okay, one focuses on this time frame right here. Okay, so let's move this down, and I might reduce my video here so you can see the whole screen. All right, so if you look here, so this is why people think, oh my God, it's booming here. You know, I remember you know people uh, putting offers in 20, 30, 50, 60 grand higher than the list price. You know, 2020, 2021, it was insane. So they say, oh, it's going to crash. Let me show you something here. OK, if you look here, you have four million homes for sale, four million homes for sale right here. OK. All right. Now it says, you know, just over a million. That's not the right number, meaning that there's about 400 uh, and change, 400, 500 already under contract. So you have basically about 600,000 to 700,000 homes on the market for sale compared to 4 million. This is why we are not gonna have a crash, okay? Something else happened from this point to this point, okay? Remember I was telling you about the fast and easy, uh, no income, no assets, state income, state assets, all that stuff. The pay option arms, um, which actually was a good program under world savings, 
But then when Countrywide and Washington Mutual got involved, they screwed it all up and then just blew it out of water. So, but what happened here from here to here is that it was implemented. You actually had to qualify for a mortgage, which is, I mean, yeah, that sounds like common sense, right? But that's what happened. So you throw all that in there. Now you have the best loans ever qualifying for a mortgage from here after the crash to here. Okay. Now you have that. And then you also have the inventory where you have about six, 700,000 homes for sale uh, on the market now compared to 4 million. That's why we are not having a crash. Okay. Something else uh, b back in 2012. Okay. Back in 2012, we had basically, so we're right at roughly around here. Okay. You had about 2.3 million homes in the market, not 4 million, 2.3. And you still had a lot of appreciation. Okay. So you can see here is around 6%. Okay. So between 2012, 2013, it was roughly around six to 8% during that time. Okay. So it's supply and demand guys. And that's why I'm just trying, I'm drilling this thing home. If you buy now, and once again, I'm just showing you numbers here. If you buy now, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen when the rates come down? Okay. People are going to flood the market even more and drive up the prices because once again, we're going to be in this inventory issue for the next couple of years at least. Okay. You got to remember, I'll throw some other stats at, at you too. Okay. Um, and I said this time and time and time and time again. Okay. You had, we had basically from 1980, each decade. Okay. 1980, 1990s, one decade, 90 to 2000, second decade, 2000, 2010, third decade, those three decades. Yeah, just under 25 million homes being built. 25 million homes uh, being built per decade, per decade. From the crash that you see over here, 2010, 2020, we had under 7 million. Okay? Why? Because all the construction financing dried up. Okay? Completely dried up and back in, um, you, know, back, you know, after the crash. You know, people were doing construction, uh, permanent financing, construction financing. They pulled all their money back. Okay? So there was hardly any outlets out there. There's a lot of builders who went under on top of that, okay, from the crash. So they pulled it all back so that you didn't have any new homes. So you got that building up, right? So that doesn't turn the corner, you know, a couple of years. Hey, okay, now we're now we're caught up. It doesn't work that way. It takes a long time. That's number one. Number two, remember we had the supply chains going on in 2019, 2020, 2021, that time. So that slowed down even more uh, progress on that. So we have all this stuff. Come and pointing to, if you look at this from analytics perspective, you are in a great position. If you can buy now and the cash flow makes sense for you right now, you can really increase that cash flow even more down the, down the line. And plus appreciation is going to keep on going up. Prediction, this is a conservative one, okay? Um, you know, all indicators are pointing to in the next five years, appreciation being over 25% in total of five years. And that's conservative. There's some people saying over 40%. So all this stuff points to, hey, you know, should I get into it now? I'm going to wait for rates to come down. Well, I just told you what's going to happen. People, it's, people are going to flood in even more, jack up the prices even more. So yeah, hey, I'm saving on the rate, but now I'm paying $20,000, $30,000 more for a house. Okay. That's going to happen. So you have to be aware of that. Okay. Um, so don't, you know, if you're going back and forth and so forth, I'm just giving you numbers so you can think about, take the emotion out of it and play it with these numbers and it's supply and demand. We all know what that means. Uh, if you have any questions on this stuff, just let me know, comment down below, shoot me a private message and we'll go from there. Okay. Hopefully this is helpful. Let me know and I'll talk to you soon.